My first dog was called Broda, short for Zeta Brodacea. She was a Rottweiler purebred and therefore for some reason had to have a name beginning with Z. Dad came up with Zeta Brodacea. Zeta, short for the dog, and Brodacea was kind of supposed to be Bodicea after the Celtic Queen, but somewhere along the line us kids changed it. Broda was an idiot, a lovable fool with a big flea problem who had no idea how to jump and whose greatest enemy was Jack, the gardener, who she knew all her life. She loved my dad. Actually, she pretty much loved everyone except Jack. She must have wagged a stumpy little tail with huge enthusiasm as burglars broke in one day, climbing a ladder through the window of our place and taking 50 bucks. Her greatest weapon was drool. We had a station wagon and when we went out on camping trips, we'd help her climb into the back and then she'd dribble on me or Jenny or Claire in the back seat, having no idea why we were screaming while mum and dad laughed in the front. We had some friends in Charters Towers who were the luckiest kids in the world. Their parents denied them nothing and they had all the masters of the universe figures and the castle too, all of which they broke. They went through pets at an amazing rate. We used to visit every year or so. They never had the same pets twice. They must have had at least three dogs, a goat, rabbits, hamsters, a pride of cats, several schools of goldfish. I remember one of them falling asleep on their pet mouse and killing it. Their dad took it before they woke up and told them it had run away. A few years later, he died in a car accident, forgot to put on his seatbelt, went through the window. They gave us a surviving kitten. Dad thought it would keep Broder company, and besides, it would be dead within a week if we left it with them. I forget what we called it, but... It eventually took on the name Cadius, he of the lean and hungry look. It was emotionally disturbed, rendered psychotic by its brief time with the Charters Towers kids. It became an attack cat, leaping out at people, connecting with four sets of claws and its teeth simultaneously <laughs> tearing off. Dad decided to castrate Cadius by applying a small amount of general anaesthetic and then cutting off its balls while it was upside down in a gumboot. The operation was a disaster. Cadius didn't respond to the anaesthetic, his balls were tiny and the gumboot ended up shredded. The operation also failed to bring in a new era of peace. Cadius took down a small child in the garden one day, stalking her until she ran crying from it and then leaping on her face and clawing at it until she tripped and fell screaming to the ground. Mum called the vet the next day and had him put down while we were at school. I called her a murderer. I was 14, an outsider and an asshole. Just before Christmas one year, Dad and I arrived home and found Broder lying dead and stiff on the deck in a puddle of urine and drool. We think she was poisoned. We found an empty dog bowl in the yard. But Dad didn't want to know for sure, so we buried her that night, digging a hole together. Dad grim, me sobbing uncontrollably. A few years passed. We finished concreting under the house and the fleas disappeared. We decided to buy another dog. Another big, silly Rottweiler. Mum, Dad and Claire drove to Brisbane and bought one. On the way back... Mum zoned out at 3am, drifted off the road slightly, waking herself up. She jerked the steering wheel, overcompensated, fishtailed a few times, then rolled off the road, hit a big tree. Dad had a few glass cuts. Mum and Claire, they were fine. Car was totaled, a complete mess, and the Rottweiler puppy that Claire had named Greta was thrown from the car, giving her a limp for life and rendering her like Broda, a non-jumping dog. Greta grew up to be every bit as silly as Broda, she inherited Broda's fleas and she dug big holes in the garden and she loved being a total stinky grot. Jenny and Claire even had some luck training her, making her sit quivering and licking her chops for doggy chocolate buds. I left home, got married, got divorced, went to Sydney to make my fortune. I went home to Townsville every couple of years. My parents would quit the house on New Year's Eve and I'd get together with old friends, we'd throw water bombs off the deck and play drunken games of croquet on the lawn while Greta tried to steal the balls. Then the fireworks would start at nine and she'd cower, whimpering under the house. We'd pat her, give her doggy chocolates. Greta's pretty old now, old for a Rottweiler. She became incontinent a month ago and Dad put her on steroid treatments. Her limps got worse, much worse. She wouldn't go for walks anymore. Just lay under the house and slept, walked out to poo on the grass. A week ago Greta stopped walking. Dad found her crawling into the garden, dragging herself along by her chin, falling down the stairs, trying to get outside to do a poo. Dad took her to the vet and got an x-ray, which didn't say anything good. A possible tumour in the spine. Mum called Jenny in England and Claire in France to give them the bad news. Dad bought a syringe of stuff to do the job, to put her down, went out into the yard to dig a grave next to Broder's. It's probably hard work digging the grave. 
Our backyard is mostly rock, so it would have taken quite some time. Dad was probably pretty tired, and it was a hot day. So Dad was pretty surprised when Greta wandered down to see what was going on. I don't know how much longer Greta's going to live. She might not make it to Christmas. Dad's syringe is still there, just in case. But I wish I'd been there to see the look on his face when Greta came down to see what he was doing in the yard. <laughs>